Hey fam, welcome back. Now, let's talk about the couples that made it past their honeymoon phase. Lauren and Cameron, they are my favorite couple. My favorite couple. Dare I say they are the couple that really started to bring people to this show because I remember like maybe like two or so weeks ago, yeah, like a week or a week and a half ago, before I even knew what this show was, I started seeing a lot of people talk about Lauren and Cameron. And I'm thinking it's characters from like Grey's Anatomy because my timeline loves themselves some Grey's Anatomy. Me too. Hey Shonda, hire me. I think Love is Blind and Netflix really owes Lauren and Cameron a bonus check because they really built this season up. Their love story, which I believe is real. I really, really do because guys, but these two were in the pod. They were making really strong connections, like right away from the first time they met. And just to see Cameron, when he walked out of the pod after having a date with Lauren and like how excited he was to tell the guys about it. For me, I just felt like you couldn't fake that. We all like were feeling the butterflies with the both of them. I feel like for a lot of these couples, the experiment worked. I think the test was them taking this experimental relationship out into the real world, but for Cameron and Lauren, it seems to be working. It really, really does. Keep in mind, I haven't watched the last five episodes. I know by the time that I put up this review or the last few episodes, how many are there? Like two, two or three? And then a reunion next week? I know there's gonna be some some kind of spoiler um, happening when I upload this video, but unfortunately I cannot watch it until my sister gets home from work because you know, we've all made a pact that we have to watch it together. So sort until of. she gets home, I don't know a damn thing about the ending of this show. But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that Cameron and Lauren are still together because I would hate for a love like that to die out. These two were made for each other. Like guys, we all saw it when they were just in those pod dates. We would see how she would talk to him, how he would talk to her. There was something there. I was just like, is this, are we seeing soulmates? In action, like what in the hell is going on? I will say this about Cameron. It's definitely the literal embodiment of a statement that my grandmother used to always say to my sisters and I. She would always say, you gotta marry a man that loves you more than you love him. And baby, Cameron is it. Cameron loves himself some Lauren. I think Lauren loves him as well. I think she's just being a little bit more realistic about the journey. You know what I mean? Also, she's never dated a white guy. It was very clear to me that Cameron had been to the Essence Festival before and enjoyed it because he was just in it, in it right away. And Lauren wasn't. And I think that apprehension came from, I don't really know you. This is an experiment. You know, being a little bit realistic and also the fact that you are white. I'm a black woman. I've never done this before. We live in America, in Atlanta. My parents, you know, are accepting but apprehensive. I'm concerned about how my dad would feel about this. You know what I mean? So she was thinking about all of that. But Cameron, his whole family probably is just like, oh, we know I... I was going to say something, but I'm just like... <laughs> you know what? This is my channel and it is Atlanta. I bet his parents were just like, well, we expected our grandkids to be colored. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope they're not like that. But... I'm just, I feel like his family already knew, already knew with Cameron, but Lauren was very apprehensive about that. And I totally understand. Been there, girl. Did I have a bad, no, the parents weren't crazy. See, the dude I was dating, he had like white liberal parents. They wanted, you know, multiracial grandkids. They just, whoo, they wanted him to marry a black woman. It was a little creepy. It was a little get out. Anyway, enough about me. I enjoy this couple. I think that Cameron, is a little too much, just a little, just a little, you know what I mean? Like Lauren can't, I don't feel like she can really breathe, but their time in the pods was beautiful. I just loved how they fell in love. Guys, we fell in love with them. Even when we thought this was ridiculous, we were still on this journey and falling in love because when Lauren told Cameron that she loved him and he broke down crying, I was like, what the hell is going on? But I never got off that boat. <laughs> I was still on that love boat, riding it with the both of them. Because you believe it. Not only do you believe this love, you want this love to work because it's two really good people. That's another thing. They're good people. You like them. You know what I mean? Like you want this to work out. They're both very sweet and kind. You just want it to be successful. I will say, I, 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 I will continue to say this. This experiment worked. It really, really did. Because after like the first episode, I was not 
stopped like focusing on the fact that it was like an interracial couple. You know what I mean? It was just like they just loved each other and I wanted to, I didn't care. You know, but that's the thing. You're in the pods with them. You're not in the real world and you're not like thinking about how this can affect the both of them because at this point their race isn't an issue. They're not talking about it. They're talking about what's happening right here. And that's what's so important. But we live in America. <laughs> okay. You can say what you want. You can't bring everybody home. And I also think, and I can be wrong here, but I think that Cameron signed up for this wanting. I really think, I'm just gonna be real. I think he probably wrote in his um, application, a oh, black woman. <laughs> Cause did Cameron ever talk to a white woman? Did we ever see him talking to a white woman in the pods? I think Cameron wanted to leave this show with the black wife. I think that he just went in with just like, this is what I want. This is what I'm connecting with. And I think he wanted to leave married. I think that Lauren, who is a content creator, <laughs> what's up YouTuber? <laughs> I think she thought that this would be a really good experiment, a uh, really uh, great exposure for, you know, her content that she's creating. You know, a really good platform for her. I also think she was in a space where she does want to, you know, uh, be a married woman. I don't think that she expected to find a Cameron which is what's so beautiful about it. I love this couple. I haven't watched the episodes. Don't tell me in the comment section, but I'm just hoping and praying that they're still together. I, I Listen, now I understand how you guys watch these like couple YouTube channels. My sister, it's like two couples and let me tell she gets notifications for when they post. I'm like, they're just going to the grocery store. Why do you care? But she will sit there and just watch them. She will watch hip, uh, the dude do the girl's makeup or hair or, you know, just watch them go shopping and have a Q&A with their kid. And she would just be like, <laughs> just watch it. I'm like, what? How are you? How is this interesting content? I get it now. I get it now because I want to know everything about Lauren and Cameron. Like, I want to follow their journey. Oh, Lauren, content creator sis. YouTuber sis, let's talk real here, ma. Interracial YouTubers, big money, especially if you're a black woman, dark skin with a white man. Get up on it. Get that coin. It's the real deal. Anyway, you might as well profit off of it. I'll subscribe because I want to know. <laughs> like, I want to see your kids. Like, I, I don't care. You can do the cheesy thing. My white husband does my hair. I don't care. Do it. Do it. Get your coin. I want to follow your journey. Like, I, I want to be there at the baby shower watching it through YouTube, or even if we become besties, hey, let's support each other. That was really creepy and weird, but I'm starting to understand now. I'm getting it, YouTube. I'm understanding how you guys can just like watch people do, you know, mundane things. But if you're invested in a couple, you, you don't care. You know what I mean? I want to see this couple go to Trader Joe's. I want them to work. Oh, the babies. I want to see the babies. I want to see little Lauren and little Cameron. I want to see Cameron crying at the baby shower holding Lauren's stomach. Like, I want to. I'm on it. I get it now. I get it now. To my little sister Lauren, I understand. Not this Lauren, my Lauren. I understand now. I understand how you can watch hours and hours of a couple that you have never met do just absolutely nothing. I get it now. I get it. Lauren, start that YouTube channel, get your, you'll be to a million with the way this show is going, you'll be to a million subscribers by June. Do it, girl. get your money, get your money. You know, I was gonna ask for 10% of the profits. I don't even want the, I don't, you don't even gotta give me the money. You don't gotta give me 10%, but have me on and promote this channel cause I gave you that idea. Well, you know what? Knowing you, content creator, you already had it planned. <laughs> Gigi and Damien, oil and water, they just don't work. They don't. This couple, I did not see any of this coming. How do we get here with them? How? What was the chemistry? I think what's happening with a lot of these couples is that you reveal something, you know, very personal to you. The other one cries and then, you know, couples that probably shouldn't be together are just like, you know what, this is a great moment. Let's get married. I think some couples are real. I think a lot of couples are just getting caught up in this is easy. 
you know, or I feel like I can trust you, let's do it. But there's so much more to a relationship. And I think that's what happened with Gigi and Damien. Gigi, Gigi found a guy who would listen to her and would not dominate her. She found a man <laughs> that she could make <laughs> Nikki. A mess. All jokes aside, I do feel like Gigi has to be the dominant partner in a relationship. And I think what she liked in Damien was the fact that no shade, she could bulldoze the relationship and he would accept it. I think that Damien is the type of guy who wants to be loved, wants to be in a relationship. And even when he sees red flags, he still pursues the relationship because he would rather be in a relationship with a partner that is probably not what he wants than to not be in a relationship at all. He gives me relationship guy. Even later when his friend is like, he doesn't bring anybody home or really introduce women to his family or whatever. I still think he was somebody who was lonely. And I think he was at the point in his life where he wanted a partner and Gigi found somebody who would let her lead. And I'm not saying that I don't think that Damien is a leader. I think that he started to like Gigi and just was like, okay, it's fine. Like he's that partner in a relationship. No, I'm okay. Oh, you want to eat here? No, it's fine. I wanted Chinese food, but you know, if you want to eat Mexican, it's fine. We can we can go eat Mexican food. I like no, it. No, no, seriously. But you really want Chinese food. But he won't say it because he doesn't want to upset his partner. That's what I think this relationship is because they are not a match at all. From the beginning, I was just like, why are you two still taking dates? You do not work. Gigi needed a Barnett, but Barnett didn't need a Gigi. You know what I mean? Like she needed a guy like that. But a guy like that wouldn't go for a Gigi. In a relationship, I think a guy like Barnett would, you know, sleep with a Gigi, but I don't think he would, you know, wife a Gigi. And not saying that anything is wrong with Gigi. She's just a very dominant and strong person. And if you can't top that, she's going to walk all over you. She wants that though. She does desire that, but I think she consistently gets men who she can walk over and she doesn't necessarily want a man that will walk over her, but she wants somebody who will challenge her and dominate her. There are some women out there who are just like, if you won't dominate me, I will dominate you. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Have your way, daddy. That was, oh no. <laughs> It sounded right in my mind and then it came out and I was like, oh, hell no. I'm not that girl. Unless you're 6'5". Let's talk about this proposal. Doing the most GG. I mean, she couldn't even let the dude propose to her. <laughs> she would not even let Damien propose. He's over here crying. He, he didn't put on a full, you know, four piece suit. You know, he was very excited telling the guys, you know, oh, I'm going to do it. Very excited. All the men are cheering him on. He goes to the pod to propose to Gigi and Gigi, no, I will not accept your proposal because I'm a woman and it is a 20th century and women can do the same thing that men can do. And then she gets on one knee and proposes to him. Girl, <laughs> Damien should have walked out. Like, none of that was necessary, but that is Gigi. She just does the most. She's great for TV. I think it would be very smart for Gigi to pursue a life. Oh, if you can handle it. If you can't handle it now, get a therapist first. But you will really make a good coin off of reality TV. You have a really great personality for that if you get the right help. Because this, this entertainment industry ain't nothing to mess with. I don't recommend this industry to anybody unless you have a therapist and a good solid family base you need that and if and if it's not in your family you better have it in your friends you're going to need some people to hold you up talk some sense into you smack you when you get a little crazy and pull you out of some mess because this industry ain't nothing to play with Gigi will do very well especially in a reality tv world but sis you're gonna have to get some support and some help therapy Lots of it. Because the Bad Girls Club is canceled, sweetie. You can't be throwing drinks and punching people like they used to do back in the day and still come back for another season. Kenny and Kelly. Um, It's my channel. I can be real. Um, I feel like if you're old enough, there was an Oprah episode where there was a couple, a straight couple, that got married about 10 years into the relationship. <laughs> they both revealed to each other that they were gay. And they got divorced, started dating the same sex, and became really good friends. I see this in Kenny and Kelly. 
Um, I just look, I'm looking at the both of them and I'm just like, especially Kelly, ma'am, there are Birkenstocks in your future. I just, I, this is why this isn't working out. This is why you're not attracted to this. You know what? I'm not going, you know what? I, I must, I'm gonna stay in my lane and I'm gonna mind my business. But I just, this, that couple, I'm telling you, when I saw them, I was just like, this is that couple on Oprah. Y'all can cuss me out now, but if I'm still on YouTube in 10 years, I'm right. Y'all better come back and apologize to me because <laughs> I am right about this couple. I was just like, hmm, I think you two are attracted to the LGBTQ within the both of you because baby, right? Come on, guys. It can't just be me. Well, I could be wrong because I didn't catch Carlton right away. My sister caught him right away, but I didn't. But I, nah, I think I'm right about this couple. Anyway, these two have no chemistry. There's no chemistry. I can't believe that there was a proposal. I can't believe that they have made it this far out of the pods. At this point, I think that the both of them are just doing this to have an experience. I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see no love. Like, I, I see friendship. And that's what Kelly keeps on saying, that they're really good friends, and that's it. I think that's what it is. These two, these two don't have a romantic attraction to each other. It's just not there. I think Kenny keeps on trying to make it happen because he's having a really good time, and they've had really good conversations in the pod. But, dude, you are Kelly's work husband. That's it. That's it. How in the hell is Kenny 27? I just looked back at my notes and I was like, he's 27. Wow. Also, Kenny is giving me a bit of trash. A bit of trash because Kelly has been very adamant in telling us and tell, talking to Kenny about it in the scenes that they are not sexually active. They have not had sex. I think they just kiss and that's it. But Kenny keeps on going back to the men and telling them that they're having sex. Like he is not yet revealed to the men that he was lying about them having sex because do you guys remember when they were all talking about their first night together and Kenny was just like oh let's just say that I wasn't able to you know go for my morning run after our night together and then in the next scene Kelly is talking about why she's not comfortable being intimate with him and he keeps this facade up mm, Kenny I, I liked you in the beginning but something is not quite right here Hmm. What do you guys think it is? Let's talk about it in the comment section below. Amber and Barnett, uh, the party girl and the frat boy met up and fell in love. I think they fell in love. This couple is sexually attracted to each other. That's it. That's it. I think that's it. Because if you look at it from both angles, Barnett and Amber are literally the same person, right? But Barnett was Amber when he was in college. He has now, also because I think he comes from privilege, has grown up a bit. Is not at the same place as Amber. Not saying that he's better off, right? Because I think that he's awful. <laughs> I'll make a turn for Barnett later in the later episodes, but from just initially meeting him, awful. He just does not seem like he's a good guy. Diamond caught that he was not a good guy right away. All the black women, all the black women were able to sense something sinister in Barnett. But all the white women, all the white women on the show, especially that white girl with the cowboy boots that he was just like, I don't want you. And she walked out crying. All the white girls fell for Barnett. This dude that was giving them absolutely nothing has not opened up to this point to any one of them but he had women fighting over him jessica's trying to sabotage his relationship with amber the white girl with the cowboy boots so i don't remember her name she's over there crying over him and wanting you know trying to make this work with him and he's not giving her anything he didn't give any of them a clear answer the only reason why he ended up with amber is because she was the only one who really settled for well i'm not quite sure all the other girls jessica and the uh, cowboy boot chick they were not okay with that because at this point they had revealed a lot. They felt like they had both walked really far in this journey with him. No, that he was walking this journey with all three of them at the same damn time telling them the same thing, which isn't much. And they still fell for him. The bar is in hell. White woman, you got to unpack that. You, you, you really need to unpack why this man was a hot contender. Y'all gotta listen to black women more. 
All the sisters knew that he was trash. They all knew. Every sister had one pod date with Barnett and was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And they were even trying to warn, you know, <laughs> the Caucasian sisters. But Barnett is just like, you know, King Caucasian. Like they were just in love with this dude. And I'm like, what? What is happening here? Because I feel like if he was a better person in the pods, we would have seen it. They would have at least tried to show her, show us why the women were falling in love with him, but that never happened. We just saw him making jokes, minimal conversation. Even when Amber told Barnett about her abortion and what she went through, the girl is crying, travailing, body shaking, voices cracking. And she's just like, if you were going to make me have to do something like that, let me know now because I can't be with you. If we end up getting pregnant and you can't handle it, let me go now. Let me go now. And he's just like, oh, wow. Wow, yeah, that sucks. And she wants to marry him. Barbara's in hell. Hell. You know what I just thought about? Barnett, and I went on his Instagram and kind of, you know, kind of confirmed it for myself. He gives me MAGA. Or is it called MAGA? Them Trumpsters. He gives me that. He gives me that he's really, him and his family, far far wacko right wing conservative he gives me that he gives me that and i think because he's minimally attractive and tall he gets a pass that's what i think but i think if you sit down and listen to his views you will be turned off and i think that's what the women the sisters were sensing with him because you can you can tell you can tell right away even in conversations where important topics like race, political views, um, sex, identity, um, immigrant, even when those things aren't being dropped, it's the way a person talks. It's the words they decide to use. They're just like, hmm. Were the sisters able to pick that up? I hope I'm wrong, Barnett, but I saw about three of your little Instagram posts before you cleaned up your Instagram and I was like, hmm, yeah. I think I'm right. And I'm kind of disappointed in Amber for still pursuing a man like that. But I think this is the thing with Amber. She is a relationship girl. Amber wants to be in love. She wants to be in love. She wants to be married. She wants to have a man. Amber is a lot like Damien, which is why it's so unfortunate that they didn't make a connection because I feel like the both of them are two people who do not like sleeping in bed by themselves. You know what I mean? Like Amber's the kind of girl who, you know, if you were her roommate and it was like platonic relationship, she would come in and be like, oh, I don't want to sleep by myself. Is it okay? She gives me that. Codependent, not shading her. I totally understand, right? But I think that's what's happening here. I think that's why she's very accepting of the fact that the only thing outside of the pods that Barnett is giving her is Lil Barnett and she's satisfied with that. Because at least when she wakes up in the morning, he's still there. Out of the cast, the two main girls for me that I'm like, you know, that I really, really enjoy watching are Lauren and Amber. I really like Amber. I think she's a fun girl, great energy, but I think she's also just a bit broken. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all broken, right? But I think that Barnett is filling a space for her that should not be occupied by anybody. I think she needs to be, you know, completely healed and set on who she is first before she goes into a relationship. Because even when she was like, you know, naming all of this stuff about herself, it just, I don't know, it just seemed very surface. You know what I mean? I think the only thing she really went deep in about that we were able to see was um, her abortion. And I was just like the, the reaction that she got back. The fact that that was enough for her. It was pretty sad to me because to be quite honest with you, I like her and I want her to have more. I want her to have better than a dude that's absolutely paying you dust when you're talking about a moment that almost broke you, you know, and ugh. any woman could do better than Barnett. Any woman like he's just he just doesn't give me like that. He's a good guy. I will talk about where I, you know, kind of see a bit more of him later and I can start to understand a bit more why some of the women especially amber fell for him but still he just does not give me solid partner right now barnett has left the frat house he hasn't left 
the frat mentality. Like he'll still be crushing cans on his head at 65 years old, but then he'll also go to Facebook and make like some ignorant comments, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then go to his construction job and live wonderfully. Like we all know that kind of like guy. We all know that kind of guy and I think that's who Barnett is. Hopefully with this show and with traveling, with the popularity of it, maybe he'll mature more, but I just feel like the bar is really low for him. So there's no need for him to do any more with just being at this level. He's he's already, you know, been very successful. Relationship financially, you know. Why does he have to strive to be better? What is he losing out on? And I was always holding on to a little bit of hope that maybe Amber would wake up and move to somebody better, maybe a guy like Mark. They seem to be really good friends outside of this whole situation. I wish, I, I wish they would have made some kind of um sexual attraction because that's the big thing with amber like, then mark as well but i think mark is more of like a relationship guy and he could make the sex work i think amber is just like i need to know that i'm going to get on this ride and have a really good time and not have to tell you what the hell to do i wish they would have made a better connection that wasn't just friendship because i think they both are the perfect partners for each other i think they both are desiring the same thing and it's trying to make it work with two people who don't get them who do not get them. Honestly, I don't think that Amber is with Barnett. I could be wrong. I have not watched the later episodes, but I don't think that Amber is with Barnett. I don't think that his family would allow it. His family was very apprehensive to her and just not as welcoming. And I did not think that she was making a really good impression. And I think that after the lusts were off with this couple, Barnett just wasn't into it. I think Amber probably was. I think if anybody stepped away from the relationship, it was uh, Barnett. I could be wrong. I'm I'm hoping they're not together for Amber's sake. Amber's sake. I want her to get like a really cool like comic con dude. You know what I mean? Uh, Barnett isn't it. He isn't. And again, I could be wrong. Barnett could be a totally different guy outside of this show. But from what we've seen so far, I'm just like, there's so much better out there for you, Amber. Not Jessica, but you. <laughs> you, Amber, there's better out there for you. Woo! Since we're talking about Jessica, let's get into this sad relationship. Jessica and Mark. Uh, Jessica, if crazy had a face, sis, you got to stop that drinking on camera. You have a little sip of wine, your goblet of wine. You go cuckoo. Okay. It, it gets to the point where every time you see Jessica with a glass in her hand, you're just like, oh. This is gonna be a good episode. Like you already know. You already know that Jessica is going to deliver. When you first meet Jessica, she's so sweet and so, you know, excited about this process and she's making really good connections with men. And then she settles down on Mark and Barnett. The issue here is one man really wants her. Another dude is just playing with her. I think what happened with Jessica and Barnett is that Barnett realized that she was getting really really serious i think when he was in the pods with amber it just seemed fun for him it seemed like a fun party girl with jessica she made it very clear that she wanted a family and this was going to be the kind of life that she was going to live i don't think that barnett was yet ready to be somebody's husband and father right away i think he knew with amber he could probably date her and have a good time kids wouldn't come into the picture until much later if that's something that he wanted to do, but I don't think he ever wanted to do it with any of the women that he met in the pods. I think Jessica was just too serious for him and Amber was direct, but he had a good time with her. So that's the only reason why I think that he chose Amber because Barnett and because Barnett and Jessica really were making good ground in the pods. When she wanted more from him, he didn't want to give more and that pretty much broke her. However, she was having these great moments with Mark who was clearly in love with her and you know, telling her, unfortunately, telling her what she wanted to hear because he was falling for her. I don't think that Mark was very upfront and honest about his feelings. Like in the confessionals, he was telling us everything, right? He was telling us how he felt. He was not necessarily communicating that with Jessica. So in this relationship, this woman who already has issues 
with their age different is leading out in their relationship. You know what I mean? She's the head of household. It's not, it's not a partner relationship anymore. It's her saying, oh, this, I don't like this. And Mark is like, oh, well, I don't like that too. I like this. And Mark is like, oh, well, I like that too. I don't want this. And Mark, oh, I don't want this either. So that is where they started to have a little breakdown. I also feel like Mark and Jessica had a breakdown when I got to be real here. Mark revealed that he was Mexican because when he revealed that to her, when he told her that, she was like, ow, ow, okay, wow, wow. She thought about that, right? But she was still having a really good time with him in the pods. Again, in these pods, it's not the real world. You create your own world. So I can understand her falling for him in that retrospect. I think when the days started to get shorter, she wanted to go after Barnett because in her mind, this was more of a plausible relationship. Then with somebody who is a different ethnicity and is also 10 years younger than her. Barnett just made sense, although he wasn't that much older than Mark, but he was, he was a bit older, closer to 30, and he was white. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I think that Mark had his ethnicity and age playing against him. I think that Jessica just did not want to talk about that on camera because there's no way that she can look cool. You know what I mean? Like there's no, there's way. no way, especially in this day and age, that she wouldn't be called out on that. But I think that is something that is always set with her. And then when she saw Mark, her reaction, guys, we got to be real. When she saw him, she was like, ow, ow. Again, the same ow. Oh, and Mark is just in love. He's running to her and she's like, oh, okay. And I think she's just being nice. I think she's just being nice. I think she's just going through the, through the process. I think she's just focusing on the check. She was not in it with Mark. He had two strikes against him. He was a different culture and he was way younger than her. I do not think that Jessica being apprehensive about dating somebody from a different race, culture, ethnicity is a big issue. I think she just did not probably feel comfortable talking about it being a white woman. You know what I mean? Lauren can talk about that. Cameron can't. You know, that's just the reality of where we are right now um, in America. She can talk about his age and make that a big deal. She can't talk about his ethnicity and she can't talk about his height. You know, so I, I don't feel bad for her. No, I do feel bad. I do. I'm going to own up to that. I do feel bad for her because I don't think that she was able to be honest about what she really wanted without seeming racist or superficial. And I am not that person who thinks that um, skin color is just based off of attraction. I know there's a lot of multifaceted things that go into that. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily right, but I think that that is what uh, Jessica was probably dealing with. I think Lauren is able to speak on that and Cameron isn't because she's not in the position of power in the United States of America. You know what I mean? So coming from someone who is oppressed, you can take the conversation, but coming from someone who is an oppressor or benefits from your oppression, you really can't take that. That's all I was saying. Also because of, and also because of Lauren and Cameron, their culture's history, there's also that conversation as well. So I'm not saying that if she does, that if Jessica doesn't like Mark because he's Mexican, then that's okay. I'm not saying that's okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that you can X somebody out because of their skin color, because of their, you know, height or because, I joke about that a lot, but I'm not, you know, to say that you don't want somebody because they're shorter than you when you are, haven't even given this person a chance. I can't take that. To say you don't want to be with this person because of the color of their skin. There are layers as to why you think the way you think. In society, it is taught that if a man is shorter than you, then he is not as masculine. If a man is making less than his woman, then there again goes his masculinity, right? So we're taught these things and we still go by these rules unconsciously. You know what I mean? Like you don't know that you're doing this it. show. Maybe look at myself a bit. You know what I mean? Like I'm looking at like, oh, have I even thought about the height of my partner? Like, what if I fell in love with somebody who was shorter than me? Like, how would I feel? You know, never even thinking about that because if you're not my height, I'm not looking. That's why this experiment is so important. It's a messy show, right? But there are a lot of good things coming out of this. Really smart takes, you know what I mean? They're removing your race. They're removing your height. They're removing your age. And it's just you. It's two souls. Two souls just connecting. And it's really unfortunate to see those who have made connections within the pods are falling apart outside of the pods. Because although you had a strong connection in the pod, society has now infiltrated your thinking. 
So that's with Jessica. She's having a really great time with Mark, right? But ah, uh, I'm 10 years older than him. What are people going to think? These physical descriptions of Mark now become more important than the time that you had in the pods. And it's really sad because you see with Mark, that hasn't changed. He still wants to be with her. And Jessica is not pleased. She's not, you know, she didn't get what Amber got. Like Amber fell in love with Barnett and then she saw him and she was like, oh my gosh. I knew she would go crazy when she saw him. I knew because Barnett is what we are told is attractive. You know, he's tall, he's white, he has a deep voice. Like all of these things were trained in society to believe that this is like the epitome of what a man should be, right? So I knew she would fall for him. She couldn't fall for a dude like Mark because he has a softer voice, right? He's a little bit kinder. He actually listens to you. He actually cares about what you think. But we're told that a man like that is a weak. So you can't get excited about him. You can't be attracted to him because you think that you can walk all over him. You don't think that he'll be as strong as a Barnett who doesn't really listen to you. Who makes jokes when you're talking about serious things. Because that's a man. He can't have emotions. He can't feel. So all that plays into how you pick your partner. We all saw that Mark and Jessica were really moving in a good place. Like, I love when they were connecting about, what, Chicago hot dogs or something. I love that they were having these moments. And then I would hate to see her in these pods with Barnett because what she is used to was wooing her. What she needs was failing in wooing her. That's the thing with Jessica. She's the problem. It's not the men that approach her. It's her because we are clearly watching her fall for a man who has paid her dust and given her nothing. While the dude that has everything that she needs, she pushes back, lets him come in, gets fulfilled, then pushes him back out. I think they could have worked. They really, really could have worked. But Jessica has a lot of issues. She has a lot of issues that she deals with with an alcoholic beverage, okay? Because we have yet to see Jessica without a little drink in her hand. Not saying that she has a problem. I'm saying that I think she likes to numb herself a lot because of some of the issues that she had. Mark and Jessica had that moment in the hotel room where he recreated the pods. I felt like they were getting back into a good place because she was opening up again. She was realizing some of the issues that she had and why she was picking or choosing men like Barnett. And I felt like they were really getting back to a good place. But Jessica just shuts him off every time. And then this is the thing with Mark. I don't have any issues with him. I think he's a really good guy. However, he needs to realize that if somebody doesn't want you, you move on. You move because on. Because again, he said this to us, not Jessica. I'm nobody's second choice. You are. You're not even her second. You're her third, fourth, fifth, tenth choice. Jessica will not choose you in real life. She just will not. But to say that to us in the confessional, I'm nobody's second choice. And then to go and allow yourself to be this girl's second choice. Like, dude, you have to think more of yourself. I think, again, he's a relationship person. They got a lot of relationship people on this but show. But maybe, just maybe, Mark, I know you are a mature 24-year-old. Maybe you're not ready to be somebody's husband. Because you need to also have a say in how you're treated. Jessica's giving you nothing, but you're still pursuing this. Well, oh, wait a minute. Wait, it just hit me. Jessica and Mark are the same damn thing. Jessica is pursuing somebody who does not want her, has been very honest and open with her about that, is pursuing somebody else in front of her face, and she's still going after this man. Mark is pursuing somebody that does not want him. This person has been very clear about that has watched this person pursue somebody else in their face and he's still there. Are they perfect for each other in a toxic way? Huh. Maybe this couple is still together. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it. You know one thing I also just thought of? I think that Jessica accepted Mark's proposal because I think she knew that she will probably see Barnett at some point. I don't think she wanted to leave this process without 
seeing Barnett. I don't think she knew that they would live together or something, but I think she knew if she stayed within this world, she would run into this man. Jessica is obsessed with Barnett. She really, really is. Because even during this proposal, she was just not there. She's just like, okay, sure. Very fake, very surface. Mark was really into it, but she was not. Wow, these two are both settling, hoping for a different outcome. It's not going to happen, guys. What you both want is not going to happen. This is a delusional couple. The delusional couple. And can you believe that Mark said that he fell in love with Jessica's voice? Really? Huh? This voice? You fell in love with this voice, Mark? You need to experience a bit more life, Mark. You are not ready. You are not ready.